farm to table movement has a very broad description, but according to thrilllist.com, quote, there's no centralized criteria by which farm to table is defined. But generally, if you know the farm or ranch your product came from, you're eating farm to table, end quote. But according to thespruce.com, quote, farm to table means that the food on the table came directly from a specific farm without going through a store, market, or distributor along the way, end quote. This movement helps small farms and local ranches to stay functional and active in the community. With the following documentary, we hope to shed light on what Farm to Table is. Our documentary on Farm to Table services seeks to inform customers about the nuances and intricacies of the Farm to Table movement. We've interviewed several experts in the field to support the integrity of our documentary. Hey guys, my name is Amato Bevilacqua. I'm from Pepe and Rose in Brantford, Connecticut. This is Grove Restaurant. It's a farm to family restaurant. And my name is Michelle Violet. Farm to, to table movement is, um, is a big thing. And uh, it's kind of brought a, a golden age for small farmers in America at this point. So we're, uh, we're part of uh, the farm to table movement. We actually, by no means did we start it, but um, it kind of grew out of the fact that we had a luncheonette before and over the years we just gained a lot of relationships with local farms and knowing that there are so many that people don't realize or, or they've just not put two and two together, we decided that we're gonna bring what we know is amazing in our local area, what's fresh, what's in season, and, and bring it to a table. Through social media, we kind of found out that there were, you know, a big movement of farm to table and the younger generation is, you know, really catching on with that. So, you know, during summer months when we're able to get local vegetables from our farms, we kind of use as many farm to table. If I was approached by a restaurant and they wanted things that we grow in quantities that we were comfortable with growing, that would probably be an okay idea. Uh, we do as many uh, visits as we can. My husband Fred is going to um, a few of the local farms on a weekly basis just to check to see what's you know what's um, ripe or what's growing at that time. So we use a lot of local guys um, in North Brantford. I think it's North Brantford or Northford. We use De Francesco Farms. They do a nice job there, and they also do business with us, which is nice. You always try and you know go back and forth. Uh, we use Country Farm out in, I think it's Guilford, North Brantford line also. Uh, we go to the local farmer's market that's set up here in the summertime. So yeah, it's always stuff within the near vicinity. I get a lot of my seeds from Fedco, which is like a, a co-op in Maine, and they have all kinds of heirlooms, a lot of organic varieties. Uh, also Johnny's up in Maine, which has um, also a lot of interesting kinds of things and organic seeds. Uh, my flower seeds, I get a lot of those from Ivy Garth, which um, sells to commercial growers. Sometimes a crop didn't yield what they thought and they have to use their stuff for a CSA, which is a community shared agriculture. So like everybody gets a box every week. So that's their first commitment. If they have to, you know, if they didn't have a great harvest of tomatoes for, for the week and they have to use um, their tomatoes for the CSA, then we'll have to maybe go to somebody else and see what they have. But you know, we have the ones that we know that we go to for certain things first because that's what their specialty is. People come and pick up their produce once a week at the farm and it, um, I don't like to say it cuts out the middleman because my father, uh, may he rest in peace, was a fruit and vegetable produce dealer and there's uh, a need for people that do that business because some things have to come from far away. Oranges, nobody's grown oranges in Connecticut. Um, but for stuff that's grown locally, it's fantastic that we can sell directly to people and get a good price for it and uh, the people get something that's really fresh. Uh, we um, have been in the past uh, part of the local farmers market so when you go down there obviously you're meeting a lot of the local farmers and um, and we also like we bake breads and so we'll use some of the ingredients that they have and then highlight it for the week and um, and it's a good relationship uh, between you know what they have what we have and, and 
It's awesome. It's a fun time. So th that's the toughest part, in, at least in my business, because we're Italian food and our menu stays the same all year round for the past 25 years that we've been in business. So the, during the winter months, you know, you can't get fresh eggplant, fresh tomatoes from, uh, you know, local farms and stuff like that. So you have to get it out of state, which is the only downfall, but it, it's the only way we can really cope with it to keep our menu the same. I have a planting mix that we get from the Vermont Compost Company in Vermont. They send us a truckload every October. And, um, Fertilizer we get from the bulk pickup that the Northeast Organic Farming Association sponsors in May. Well, we actually pick up in March and uh, you get a discount because you order it with all the other farmers in the area. And um, we, we get some plastic pots and whatnot from the Griffith Greenhouse supply. Uh, so we'll, what's in season? Um, so nothing's forever and nothing's always bountiful. So you have to adapt. And, um, and a lot of the times we have to tell our customers um, because people will walk in with the assumption that everything is from local farms and everything's organic and everything. And it, that's not realistic, it's not honest, and it's not possible. So we let people know that we do what we can when we can. Um, most of my customers, um, one of the reasons they come here is that they like things that are organic and genetically modified does not fit into the organic standards. Um, I mean, we just make sure, we, we go by the vegetables and we create a relationship with, you know, usually the owner. But for the most part, we look at the product, make sure the vegetables are fresh, you know, they're all, uh, you know, held to a certain standard. And you can tell by looking at them, stuff's not bruised, stuff's, you know, been picked fresh. You look at the stems, you can tell when it was picked. If it's starting to turn brown on you, you know it was picked, you know, within the last week. When something's nice and green, you know it was picked, that, you know, that day or the day before. So that's what we really look for. The big commodity crops like corn and soybeans, um, or sugar beets and uh, potatoes, and a lot of those have been genetic, genetically modified to uh, uh, resist uh, spraying with herbicides. That way the farmers can do weed control by spraying a lot of herbicides. But we do weed control by pulling up the weeds. When you, when you have it, lesser steps to where you're putting it in your body. People just feel that, that it's different. Uh, I hope that there are um, more small farms and that the small farms that, that are in um, New England and other regions of the country can uh, survive and, you know, and that we can all help to uh, create a, a good environment because I think farms are important for, uh, for wildlife and for having a healthy planet and a healthy diet. I want to see more local restaurants. I want to see more individually owned. Um, the kind of, it seems what brings people to a, an area, like a downtown area. First it's restaurants and then it's the other things like shops and boutiques and that kind of thing. Um, I would like to see, personally I'd love to see this town boom a little bit more and have more um, independently owned businesses thrive as a result of the relationships that we have with our community and with our local farms.